Hi everyone, I'm Jen Person, Developer Relations Engineer at TensTorrent. Today I'm going to explain the fundamentals of Ten6, TensTorrent's processor architecture. If you come from a software background, I'll be throwing a lot of new terms at you, but I'll explain along the way to get you up to speed. So let's dive into a Ten6 processor by examining a Ten6 core. The total number of cores you have depends on which accelerator you have, so check out the product page on the TenStorrents website to get the specific details on your hardware. Encapsulated in a TenStorrent accelerator nests five baby RISC-V cores. RISC-V is an open standard instruction set architecture, or ISA, based on established reduced instruction set computer, RISC, RISC, principles. The goal of RISC-V is to make a practical ISA that is open source, usable academically, and deployable in any hardware or software design without royalties. The 10.6 core's baby RISC-V processors run C and C++ kernels, which direct instructions to both compute and data movement engines. Each 10.6 core includes 1.5 megabytes of static RAM, or SRAM, scratch pad memory. This might seem small at first glance, but it's designed to handle small tiles of matrices and vectors efficiently. Tensix drives those computations with two key engines, the matrix engine, responsible for matrix multiplications, element-wise operations, and dot products, and the vector engine, which handles vectorized kernels like top k, sort, and specialized functions such as GELO, exp, and square root. The data movement engine manages data flow within each core and across the entire mesh, relying on two integrated networks on chip, or NOCs. Scaling up, these cores come together in a system on chip, SOC, which is a collection of cores and IO blocks interconnected through a NOC based mesh. Each 10.6 compute core features local SRAM to store computation and data efficiently while DRAM memory banks provide larger off-chip storage to support system-wide performance. Beyond the cores, key infrastructure components enable seamless communication and control. Ethernet cores facilitate chip-to-chip -chip communication, and this ensures data flows smoothly across the mesh, while the PCIe link serves as the bridge between the chip and the host system. PCIe stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, which is a high-speed serial computer expansion bus standard. The ARC core is responsible for board-level control and system administration. As we saw, each 10.6 core comes with five single-threaded baby RISC-V processors, and here's the key part. Core-to-thread mapping is one-to-one. -one. That means there's no complex scheduling and no context switching. Work is split across cores and kernels are dispatched directly. Once a kernel starts running, it runs to completion without interruption. This makes execution predictable and avoids the overhead you'd see in traditional architecture that juggles multiple threads on a single core. This also makes performance analysis and debugging easier. And since performance is measured by direct cycle counting of C and C++ kernels, you get a clear view of execution without background noise from scheduling. Debugging is straightforward too. GDB lets you step through execution, set breakpoints, and use printf to inspect runtime behavior. No surprises, no unpredictable context switching, just a clean and efficient way to track what's happening on the hardware. In TT Metallium, operations run using a temporal execution model. That means each op runs one after the other using all available resources to execute as fast as possible. There's no fancy scheduling or resource splitting. Each op gets full control of the hardware until it completes. And then the next one starts. Other operation layouts like spatial or hybrid execution aren't used in TT Metallium. Everything follows the simple, efficient execution order where ops maximize resource utilization before moving to the next stage. 10.6 cores rely on high bandwidth, large capacity SRAM for near memory compute, keeping data as close as possible to execution. This design pushes performance to silicon peak by using single level SRAM as the primary tensor storage. Instead of relying on high bandwidth memory for frequent memory access, 10.6 minimizes off-chip communication, reducing latency and keeping computations efficient. Computation is tile-based, operating on 32 by 32 matrix tiles. This structure is a perfect match for the single-threaded RISC-V processors inside each 10.6 core. 
Because of this, data movement and computation can happen concurrently, making workloads more efficient without unnecessary bottlenecks. Tensix also implements distributed shared memory to optimize data layout and movement. In-place compute on local SRAM means less data shuffling, which cuts down on redundant transfers. The result? More efficient execution, reduced memory overhead, and streamlined compute pipelines that scale effortlessly. Unlike architectures that blur the line between compute and data movement, Tensix keeps them explicitly separate. Kernels manage their own data transfers to SRAM with movement carefully planned and optimized beforehand. There are no caches, no global crossbars, just clean deterministic data handling where everything is placed exactly where it needs to be. Now here we've got some visuals showing you how you can scale out your ops. In the upper left, you see direct access to a single 106 core. We'll dive deeper into this in the next series, but for now, let's simplify the process. Knock zero pulls data from SRAM and dispatches it to CPUs two, three, and four. CPU five then takes the process data and writes it back to SRAM. Moving from the top left to the top right, the next figure shows pseudocode for the kernels you'd write to decouple CPUs one and five from CPUs two, three, and four. These kernels operate on tiles, either moving them or performing tensor math. The yellow cylinder highlights a C++ single tile element-wise add applied to elements in a tile. You'll also notice that this example moves two tiles. That's because Tensor and data movement kernels use double buffering. The lower right figure demonstrates how cores communicate with both NOC0 and NOC1. The way you send data, known as multicasting, depends on your workload. The purple 106 cores in this figure show an example multicast for matrix multiplication, where each core receives a portion of data. Finally, scaling doesn't stop at a single chip. You can expand across multiple chips or even multiple cards, which communicate over Ethernet. When implemented correctly, this creates what we call a sea of cores, where compute resources scale seamlessly across hardware. So whether you're playing around with a single processor or scaling out, the development process is the same, making it easy to scale seamlessly. And that's your quick overview of a Tensix processor. If you're interested in learning more about Tenstorn architecture and TT Metallion concepts, then check out our video on architecture and compute. Thanks for watching.